Good morning, members of parliament, support staff, TV viewers, radio listeners, those following via social media, members of the media, persons in the Tribune, to all a very good morning. Welcome to this Central Committee meeting number 15 for today, Tuesday, March 19th. I want to give a special welcome to the members of the Council of Ministers. With us at this time, we have Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, Ms. Silvera Jacobs. We have the Minister of Finance, Mr. Artwell Erian. Minister of Justice, Ms. Anna Richardson. Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. Randus Rudolph Samuel. Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, Mr. Ot Omar Otley and uh, their respective staff. We have been notified that the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment and Infrastructure, Mr. Egbert Duran, is unable to attend meetings at this time. We have established a quorum of 12 members. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. As I mentioned, notice of absence from the following members of parliament have been received, and that is from MP Egbert Duran. Are there any notifications from the floor at this time? That not being the case at this moment, I want to again mention Parliament's initiative today as the Nature Foundation observes Biodiversity Awareness Month, and in particular today, the awareness against the use of especially single-use plastic. The Nature Foundation has declared the month of March as a month of biodiversity awareness. Every day in the month of March, Nature Foundation has selected a theme with respect to biodiversity. And as I mentioned, today is the awareness of the effects of plastic in general and single-use plastic in particular. Today, Parliament is doing its part where this awareness is concerned, and we will be attempting not to use any single-use plastic items throughout the day here in the Parliament of St. Martin. That being the case, I ask all in the community to join us today in this effort of creating awareness by especially limiting or banning completely the use of single-use plastic for at least two days. And so the parliament is, will be doing its part, as I mentioned, and all others are encouraged to do the same, as well as to follow the other days as mentioned, not as mentioned, as noted by Nature Foundation during the month of March. So I see the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport. Minister, you have a comment to make at this point in the meeting? Um, good morning, Madam Chair. I, I don't know if this is the right moment, but I would like to ask for a moment of silence for the passing of teacher manager Kati from MPC. Just give me one moment, please, Minister. Um, your request will definitely be taken into consideration, but just let me make sure that it comes in appropriately at this um, during this meeting so we um, that with that notification that I made I will now on 
the proposal of the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport. We will observe a moment of silence on the passing of teacher Vital Carty of the MPC. Yesterday in, their, in our meetings, the um, condolences were extended to the family, friends, and colleagues of Mr. Carty. And now I invite the members of parliament and all others here in the hall to observe a moment of silence. I see the minister has already stood up and I ask all of you to stand in observance of a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, I therefore, given the request of the Minister of Education, it, I would also then like to repeat a condolence message that was mentioned on behalf of Parliament yesterday, and that is um, also on the passing of a former government worker, Miss Angela Sadler. And again, our prayers and thoughts go out to family and friends of the late Ms. Sadler. The, thank you, Minister, for that, um, that proposal. Thank you, members of Parliament, for, the, um, for your indulgence as we now continue with the agenda point for today's meeting. And that is the national ordinance stipulating the budget for country St. Martin for the year 2024, National Ordinance Budget 2024 of the parliamentary year 23-24 and is numbered as a national ordinance on the number 175. This national ordinance is registered in the archives of parliament on the IS 487 of this parliamentary year, and it is dated March 7, 2024. A little elucidation with respect to the agenda point is as follows. Parliament has received the national ordinance of the budget of the country for the year 2024 on March 7th of this year. Members, of course, have received a copy of the draft national ordinance um, hard copy as well as a digital link via email, and it is available on the general team of Parliament. The budget 2024 is also available on our website, which is extremely important for the general public to know, and that the website of Parliament, as a reminder, is www.sxmparliament.org org and as well our Facebook page for the general public. I would now before going over to explaining how we will handle in this central committee meeting, I will want I will adjourn for approximately 15 minutes in order to allow the, to make sure that all presentations have been received and they are uploaded and all the technical matters are well organized. In fact, we don't have to take that long. I am being told we'll just take five minutes. So that will take us to about, let's say, 10.42, 10.43. So we're going to adjourn until 10.43 a.m. Meeting adjourned.
members of parliament, members of the Council of Ministers, and all others, welcome back to this meeting of parliament that was adjourned for a few brief moments in order to make sure that all technical aspects were taken care of. We are in this meeting starting the handling of the draft budget 2024 as received from the government of St. Martin. And I have mentioned that this budget, of course, is available in different formats to all members of parliament and also to the general public. The information regarding that part I will share again in a short while. Before I give the floor to the Council of Ministers, I want to explain how we will handle this Central Committee meeting of Parliament. We have here the ministers for the handling of the draft budget 2024 in this Central Committee meeting. Each minister will give a presentation regarding the draft budget of their respective ministry. And the sequence that will be followed for this presentation is as follows. One, the Minister of Finance. Two, the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment. We're gonna have a correction there. Um, while the Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure was listed as the second one to present that presentation on behalf of that ministry will be just before the last presentation, which will be by the Prime Minister. So once again, we start with the Minister of Finance, then we go over to the Minister of Justice, then the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, followed by the Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication. Then we get the presentation on behalf of the Ministry of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure. And the final presentation for this morning to be done by the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs. After these presentations, the floor will be given to the members of parliament to pose questions to the government ministers regarding the draft budget 2024, and this will be done per ministry. The members of parliament will pose their questions per ministry, as mentioned, and this will assist the Secretariat of Parliament in preparing the final report, which is a necessary part of this procedure, and it will also assist the government apparatus in preparing the answers to the questions posed as is required of every national ordinance, draft national ordinance, the reports of the Central Committee meeting, questions and answers are a part of the process of the legislation slash the national ordinance. So these reports are a necessary part of the process to come to legislation. The Questions are to be posed in the same sequence, and just for clarity, I'll go over the sequence once again, where the questions are concerned, and we start with the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Justice, Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication, Minister of Public Housing, Spatial Planning, Environment, and Infrastructure, and then the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs. So, members will pose their questions related to, for example, the Ministry of Finance, and then move on with their questions for the Ministry of Justice, etc., as mentioned earlier. At all times, during the answering of the questions, there will be at least two ministers present in the building in order to ensure that the meeting can run smoothly. And each minister will return a maximum of two times to answer questions that were posed regarding their ministry. The members of parliament, again, for the 
smooth flow of the meeting and meetings are encouraged to pose as much as possible their questions in the so-called first round of the meeting. As usual, we would request of members of parliament to submit the questions, their questions to the Secretariat of Parliament. Um, preferable once you start to speak, but if possible, um, if not possible, then at least right after speaking on the same day. And this is all about assisting in the process of quickly drafting the final report and also assisting the government in providing the note following the final report as soon as possible. Both documents are an indispensable part of the process, as I mentioned. The, some other general remarks, housekeeping remarks, you can say, are that um, if it is at all possible that factions were and are encouraged to prepare and do their research together where the budget is concerned, and factions can also use the approach of creating a list of questions on the budget and sharing these questions amongst their faction members. Just a proposal, again, to kind of keep it a little more centralized where the questions are concerned. There will be a lunch break from 1 to 2 p.m., during which lunch will be served and a supper break later in the evening at about 6 o'clock during which supper will be served. Of course, all of these servings are to take place without any type of single-use plastic being used. And we will not go on any later. It is the expectation that we don't go on any later than 9 o'clock, um, 9 p.m., that is. Of course, depending on where we are in a meeting, an exception can be made but um, we need to take into consideration those who will be doing the work in terms of preparing um, the, the, the questions, formalizing the questions, as well as formalizing the, the answers. So with those explanations, it is now my pleasure to offer the floor to the Minister of Finance, Minister Artwell Irian, to make his presentation. Minister, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning to the Khafir. Good morning to the members of Parliament. Good morning to my colleague, Council of Ministers. Good morning to you in the Tribune. And good morning to all those viewing via all the different means. I will start right away with the 2024 draft budget for St. Martin. This draft national ordinance budget 2024 reflects the financial position, prospects, and policy intentions of country St. Martin for the year 2024. The presentation will be provided by me. will address both the budget 2024 as a whole, as also matters pertaining to specifically the Ministry of Finance. After my presentation is completed, the other ministers will give insight, as was mentioned by the chair, into their specific budgets for their ministries. In my presentation of the revised budget for 2023, which was approved in December 2023, I provided insight into the reasons behind the budget delay. However, given the presence of several new members of parliament today, I will briefly summarize those reasons once more. The budget for 2023 was initially approved on March 31st, 2023. However, CFT in their article 12 requested that the budget be amended, particularly regarding the multi-year aspect. This forced adjustment and the passage of time resulted in further modifications to the budget. Factors contributing to the delay included discussions on the loan refinancing, which were tied to annual discussions, <coughs> incorporating calculations regarding the changes in justice function book into the multi-year budget for 2023, and updating the budget based on the actual data from the quarter one and quarter two reports. The adjustments to 2023 halted and delayed the process of completing the budget for 2024. The team has been working very hard to improve the budgets of the country and also to improve the multi-year projections which were absent from previous budgets. Reflecting on the year 2023, based on the unaudited actuals, we note that the revenue aligns with the budget. However, the actual expenses are lower than the budget expenses, which results in an even higher results than were anticipated for the year 2023. I want to express my sincere gratitude to the finance team for their tireless efforts in striving to complete the budget 2024 on time. Although we didn't quite achieve our goal, I deeply appreciate the hard work that went into it. 
it was mutually agreed with the CFT not to seek Article 11 advice for the 2024 budget, as it is not a requirement to ensure timely completion by December 2023. We actually submitted the 2024 COM approved budget to the Council of Advice on November 17th, 2023, and received their feedback on December 15th, 2023. However, due to Christmas vacation and elections, there was a delay in incorporating the Council of Advice feedback and updating the budget accordingly. There was some discussion about whether the new Council of Ministers should present the budget for 2024. However, considering the time that has passed, it was decided to proceed with the current version of the 2024 budget. Therefore, here I am today to present to you the budget for the year 2024. Also, via you, Madam Chair, prior to beginning the presentation, I would also like to mention that we noticed a mistake in the draft ordinance in Article 2A, Lit 2A. We are referring to 2023. This has been, this has to be 2024. A note of advice thing has been drafted and is on its way to Parliament. This will be presented to rectify the submitted draft ordinance. The content of our presentation today is the vision and, ministry, the vision and mission of the Ministry of Finance highlights for 2023. High level analysis for the forecast of revenue and expenses 2024. Summary of the revenue and expenses increase in budget 2024, the Ministry of Finance policy priorities, other important matters, and the conclusion. The vision and mission of the Ministry of Finance allow me key highlights for the year 2023. I'll provide an overview for the figures, starting with a comparison between the budget for 2024 the budget for 2023, and the actual figures for the years 2023 and 2022. Please note that the actual figures for the years are unaudited and are sourced from the quarter four report, which has been shared with the Parliament, along with the approved annual report for 2022. Following this high-level comparison, I will delve into a more detailed analysis. After comparing the budget for 2024, I will summarize the main factors contributing to the revenue and expense increase in this budget. I will also offer some insight into the policy priorities of the Ministry of Finance for the year 2024 and touch on the key values upheld by the Ministry. Lastly, I will conclude the presentation by highlighting all the important factors influencing the budget for 2024. The Ministry of Finance has the following vision and mission. These are key in the prioritization of our policies for the year and in decisions made. During the remainder of the presentation, there are main topics, especially in the highlights for the year 2023, which can directly be linked to a specific mission of the Ministry of Finance. I'd like to highlight some key accomplishments for the year 2023. One of our significant achievements was securing the 90 million for essential investments in both the government apparatus and St. Martin. Despite having plans and aspirations without funds, they remain just that, plans. Since 2014, St. Martin hadn't received approval for capital expenditure. While we did receive funding after AMR from the trust fund for major projects, accessing and using the, those funds for smaller projects proved more complex than anticipated. Of the 90 million, 60 million came from a loan officially transferred to our accounts in November 2023 and 30 million are approved in grants for the Netherlands via the TAVO. This was only possible through extensive preparation work, demonstrating our commitment to key projects. The budget process to secure the loan involved resolving financial backlogs, improving the budget quality, and extensive discussions with the CFD. Now that the funds are available, it's time for execution. Another worthy Another noteworthy achievement is the refinancing of the COVID loans, which was tied to any solution. We secured the, the loans at the most favorable, favorable interest rate possible under the circumstances at 3.4%. Since this was already discussed yesterday, I won't delve further into this matter. In 2023, we also initiated a pilot, a trial project, I will call it a pilot project, uh, for a 32-hour work week within the ministry. It was a project that we wanted to start from 2020, but due to COVID, we couldn't. But actually, COVID actually inspired us to push further along um, last year. So we started a, a, a three-month pilot project with a department in the Ministry of Finance. This move promoted a better work-life balance for employees, 
align, aligning with our mission to prioritize lifelong learning for our staff and empower individuals to reach their full potential. This was done via, um, we did a survey with the, with the, with the department um, that they had to fill out. The first month, they had Monday or Fridays off. Then they uh, had to study from home. The second month, the pilot was either Monday or Friday off, and they had to work for nine hours every other day. And the third month was Monday or Friday, you had to work from home. We are busy now finalizing the exit survey where we get the feedback again, where we could take this pilot project into policy. I cannot stress enough the importance of updating our government apparatus with a new tax and financial system. In 2023, significant progress was made on both fronts. We initiated the tender process for the tax system and selected a preferred supplier based on the results. We aim to finalize the contract negotiations with the winning supplier to begin the process of replacing the old tax system with the new one. Regarding the financial system, we've made even greater strides. The current plan focuses on phase one and phase two. Phase one commenced in January 2024 and is expected to last approximately 12 months. The primary objective is to document and validate the main financial processes, establish a robust control framework, and implement Microsoft Dynamics 365 finance and operations by January 1st, 2025 at the latest. Phase two will begin in January 2025 and will also last about 12 months, concluding on December 31st, 2025. The main goal of phase two is to configure and fully implement the five main financial processes, including payroll, purchase to pay, order to cash, subsidies, and budgeting. Additionally, a comprehensive process control framework for these main financial processes should be in place by the end of phase two. Completion of phase one and two, establishing the legislation in accordance with article 47, paragraph six of the accountability ordinance has taken place which included an extensive research document based firstly on previous work executed by the government committee to establish the legislation. Since the government committee was established years ago, there was a need to revisit what was done in the past. Consequently, phase two to finalize a full legislative package based on the following philosophy are states to begin. Clear and simple rules, lowest possible administrative burden, flexibility, procurement rules must be easy to build on and expand upon in the future. The guiding principles of this philosophy are based on integrity, accountability, equal treatment of suppliers, and transparency. Now I'll delve deeper into analysis of budget figures for the year 2024. On the upcoming sheets, I will analyze the revenue and the expenses, comparing the budgeted figures of 2024 with those from 2023. The current quarter four actuals for 2023 and the figures from the annual report for 2022. Initially, I will offer a visual comparison of the figures, then I will provide a detailed explanation of the main reasons behind the increase in both revenues and expenses. On this sheet, an overview is provided of the revenue and expenses for the various periods, with figures in the millions. The budgeted figures for 2024 are displayed on the left, followed by the current actuals as reported in quarter four for the 2023. Then the budgeted figures for 2023, and finally the actuals from the financial statements for 2022, which is shown to the right. For the budget 2024, we anticipate revenue of 575 million gillers and expenses of 573 million gillers. Upon reviewing this sheet, it's evident that our expenses and revenue for the various periods are closely aligned. In 2022, expenses slightly exceeded revenue, resulting in a slight negative result of minus five million. For the budget 2023, we anticipated a slight positive result of one million guilders, which based on actuals, we expect to be much more positive than budgeted, primarily due to actual expenses than anticipated. In 2024, we estimate a positive result of 2 million guilders. It's important to note that the figures for 2024 are slightly inflated due to the inclusion of funds received primarily from TBO, which are included on both revenue and expenses side, sides of the budget. In the previous periods, there were issues with receiving and using these funds because if they were not included in the budget, as such, we could not make use of them. 
to prevent this issue, we made sure to include as much as much of these in the budget. In this slide, we focus on the revenue. With tax revenue compri compromising of 80% of the total revenue for the country, in 2023, tax revenue increased by 18%, or 63 million guilders, compared to 2024. For 2024, we estimate a further increase of 11%, or 45 million guilders, compared to 2023. This increase in taxes is partly attributed to economic growth, with GDP expanding by 7% in 2023, and is expected to grow by 6% in 2024. We believe that this increase in taxes is partially due to economic growth and partly due to the collection efforts undertaken by the tax department. Specific project teams were assigned to focus on improving tax collection. Additionally, we anticipate that the implementation of the new tax system will further enhance this collection by simplifying the processes. As we examine the details of the tax revenue further, it's evident that the two primary revenue generators are payroll tax and turnover tax. In 2024, we have, an increase, we have increased the projected revenue for these taxes in line with expected economic growth. Additionally, we have included an expected revenue of $9 million from the tourist tax in the, year, in the budget for 2024. It is anticipated that this tourist tax will be, will be implemented by mid-year the introduction of this tax will help with the reduction of other taxes, thereby alleviating the burden on our citizens and business community as included in the tax reform initiative. We now dive into the expense detail. And here we will examine expenses in more detail. For expenses, for the expense categories, personnel goods and services, social services, grants and subsidies account for 95% of total expenses. In 2024, the major increases are primarily personal expenses, which is 27 million guilders, goods and services, an addition of 18 million guilders, and grants and subsidies, 11 million guilders. The expenses for social services remain aligned with prior years. summary increase in revenue. On this slide, it will summarize, it summarizes the main revenue increase. Total revenue has increased by 58 million guilders compared to the budget for 2023. Of this increase, 31 million is attributed to higher taxes with the turnover tax and payroll tax increases based on actuals and expected economic growth. The 9 million increase in tourist tax revenue is based on the law coming into effect and implementation by the mid-year. The remaining revenue increase is due to the inclusion of the sale of shares of Veneer expected to generate at least minimum 30 million guilders, which we'll go deeper into at the end of the presentation. And funds to be received for projects, including Terrio projects, totaling 7 million guilders. Summary increase in expenses. On this slide, it outlines the main increase in expenses for the year 2024, which amounts to 56 million guilders compared to the budget 2023. The primary increases are as follows. Interest expenses have increased by 30 million guilders. This is mainly due to the refinancing of COVID loans in November, which were previously at 0% and now are at 3% annually. So Martin secured the most favorable interest rate compared to other islands. Discussions on the further refinancing details will continue throughout the year with a deadline for, set for September 2024. Subsidies have increased by 12 million guilders compared to the budget 2023. This is mainly a result of actual expenses based on the new funding system calculation for school subsidies. Accordingly, the budget has been adjusted to reflect these actual costs. Lastly, the major increase in budgeted expenses for the year 2024 is the rise in personal expenses, amounting to 27 million guilders. Of this increase, 10 million is allocated for the much deserved and necessary indexation of civil servant salaries, set at 2% for 2024. This adjustment also considers step increases where, where applicable and re reflects payroll adjustments due to the updated function book of justice workers. 
civil servant salaries have not been indexed since 2012, so we have included a 2% indexation for 2024, and have also incorporated a 2% indexation in the multi-year aspect of the budget, ensuring annual salary indexation in the coming years. It's also good to note that for the indexation to take place, the budget needs to be approved. Additionally, a $2 million increase is attributed to adjusting vacation pay from 6% to 7% for 2024. We've also included an additional 1% increase in the multi-year budget for 2025, ensuring civil servants receive 8% vacation pay annually in 2025. We've made these adjustments to match, um, at least match the other islands, um, Corazon and Aruba, who already are at that percent. Furthermore, OZR expenses have increased by 4 million based on actuals, and social premiums have, ex have increased by 5 million due to the increase in salary-related expenses. I'd also like to add, when it comes to the OZR expenses, that it's also important that we continue to push to have the Otley Care implemented as soon as possible. It would, I'm oh, sorry, what was it? What's your name? <laughs> Saha. Uh, sorry, Saha. Um, the Saha. To Saha? Yeah. Yes. the Saha as soon as possible. So the Saha will not eliminate um, our worries for what they are, but it will contribute to the um, sustaining us to be able to continue paying the it are. The Ministry of Finance Policy 2024. For the year 2024, the Ministry of Finance will prioritize the following policies. Increase efficiency and effectiveness of the tax authorities' levy and collection processes, simplifying the tax system, improve coordination of the government budget with the needs and well-being of the residents of St. Martin, a more realistic and well-sustained, a more realistic and well-substantiated budget that meets policy goals and the NFT standards, improved accountability of public finances, guaranteeing that the quality of the financial organization is at the desired level, and that the government carries out its supervisory tasks properly, improving fiscal policy. Many of these policies have already been initiated in previous years, and the ministry remains committed to prioritizing and advancing them. Key initiatives such as implementing the new tax system and financial system, providing training to civil servants, undertaking tax reform, addressing financial backlog issues, and enhancing budget quality will be pivotal in achieving these policy objectives. Other important matters. Investments. In the 2024 budget, the 90 million investments for the 2023 budget have been carried over. Although funding has been secured for these investments, they must be included in the budget for the current year to be executed. Additionally, an extra 140 million guilders has been allocated for investments to be carried out in 2024. The top five new investments included in the budget 2024 are the phase two of the prison, the wastewater project phase one for KAB, the purchase of land, the repair of the road repair and the new building for the Met, the Met Office. I, antici I anticipate that the specific ministers will provide further details on these investments in their respective presentations. Uh, on the purchase of land, I'll touch on that one. The purchase of land was, uh, uh, was initiated um, based on, concern, on mul multiple concerns. One was the growing need for uh, our lack of bearing ground area. We have, um, we have come to the tail end of our space when it comes to burials. And in addition to that, for housing among others, we initiated the process of looking for land, and this land is the land we have um, looked at is land in close to Belvedere from the Plants family, and um, the project then has been set by Vromi to execute.
as I previously mentioned earlier on in the presentation, I forgot what slide it was, we also mentioned a partial or sales of Minia share. In 2020, when we came into government, I personally started a, a task um, on looking on the valuations of all government-owned companies. I thought it was important to know the value of our companies. When I came in, we didn't I would ask a question, and it was not done before, so we didn't have an idea of what the value of our companies were. Also, during the pandemic, when Winair needed funds uh, to survive, but also funds for investments, us, the government, as the majority shareholder, uh, were not able to help at that point in time. I also discussed with the Council of Ministers at that time that we should start to look at strategic partners for government-owned companies. If you look around the world, most government-owned companies, most governments have divested um, uh, their shares in government-owned companies. But these, but these countries are also typically bigger. Um, what I did discuss with them, let's look at strategic partners for the government-owned companies, which will, one, generate revenue for government by selling partial shares, but also allowing the, the companies to have uh, a shareholder that could continue to invest in them. We started this process, and um, we also wanted to make sure that any uh, any shares or partial shares of Avenir would also still remain locally. So we have uh, there are there is a, a couple of entities that have shown interest. We've started the process of of, of initiated the process of exploring the potential sales of Avenir shares, and highlighted this. The proposed purchase of the majority of government shares to Winair aligns with the government strategic goals and will provide a significant boost to the airline's operational capabilities. It's also something that Winair themselves are interested in. The issuing of new shares to bolster Winair's capitalization is of keen interest, as this will stimulate the airline's financial position and pave the way for future growth. This will bring new opportunities for the current shareholder, namely immediate funds, the sale of the shares of Winair immediate funds for the government of St. Martin addressing financial obligations, revenue boosts, a prosperous money boost government revenue shares through taxes and contributions, providing an annual benefit, shareholder dividend that mandated, the, the mandated dividend policy requiring the distribution of, of percentages of Vineyard's free cash flow, ensuring that all shareholders benefit from a cash return on their equity, equity growth, the anticipated increase in Vineyard's share value benefits all shareholders contingent on a successful growth strategy. And a, uh, uh, an item that I personally put in that document was an employee share option. So a portion of the shares of Veneer will be set for all employees of Veneer. So all employees of Veneer now would also have a portion of shares as part of their assets, as part of their contract. Other benefits include economic growth. Further expansion stimulates economic growth, creating job, jobs across various sectors, from pilots and flight attendants to maintenance, customer service, ramp in administrative staff. Increased resilience, shareholders with, a, with robust financial resources can provide support during natural disasters or crises, ensuring that airlines stability and continuity. When air perform, when air's performance overtakes over time takes, makes it the optimum time to sell shares. From 2011 to till 2021, Winnear has shown a volatility in its performance influenced by external factors such as hurricanes, Air Maria, and the 2019 pandemic. Despite challenges, the company has witnessed positive performance in the last two years, namely 2022 and 2023, showcasing a general uptrend in shareholders' equity. In 2023, Winnier fully repaid the $4.5 million loan it received from the Dutch government during the COVID pandemic. Notably, the 2024 is anticipated to mark the first year of positive shareholder equity on the book value since 2010. By being, by being able to manage and increase its performance, Winnier has pinpointed the following direction setting initiative for the future. Improve the returns on twin auto aircraft by purchasing two aircraft instead of leasing them. 
expand service to the broader Caribbean by increasing the ATR fleet, venture, in, venture into the ground handling business by commercializing Rainier's ground handling concession, and achieving the objectives on generating steady organic growth and obtaining ad additional funding which will be facilitated by the capitalization of Rainier. Thank you for listening, and I'm pleased to see our economy improving, which has a positive impact on our budgets and finances. Again, I would like to thank the staff of the Ministry of Finance for their efforts. We look forward to any additional questions you may have pertaining to the budget for the year 2024. That would be all, Madam Chair. Thank you, Minister of Finance, for your presentation in this first meeting regarding the draft budget 2024. I now immediately go over and give the floor to the Minister of Justice, but we'll give a minute or two, that's all we need, in order to change to the next presentation. So the meeting will not be adjourned while we await for the change over to the next presentation, and that is taking place currently. Minister, I see your presentation is up, and are you ready to go? The Minister of Justice is ready to go with her presentation. Minister, you are invited to take the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair Lady, members of Parliament, Secretary Generals, colleague ministers, support staff, the listening and viewing public, and of course, a special good morning to all senior citizens. Since, since taking on the position of Minister of Justice, one of my main goals has been to enhance the internal workings of the ministry to ensure efficient fulfillment of its duties. The vision of the Ministry of Justice is to encompass the assurance of law and order, effective law enforcement, enhanced safety, security, and the maintenance of public order throughout the island of St. Martin. The mission of the Ministry of Justice is to establish the requisite conditions for preserving safety, security, and upholding law and order while ensuring the legal certainty of the community of St. Martin. Throughout my four-year tenure, I remained committed to addressing the challenges and needs of the personnel of the Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice comprises of nine departments and collaborates with various partners within the justice chain. In the 2024 budget proposal, the Ministry has meticulously reviewed the placement of active staff within the approved function book for the Ministry of Justice. This allocation reflects adjustments in salary positions and associated compensation. The overall cost variances um, arise from various factors, such as the adoption of new salary tables for civil servants performing police duties, a suggested 2% indexation across all salary tables, and a rise in vacation allowance from 6 to 7%. It is noteworthy that these increased costs are particularly evident in the budget post code 41039. Madam Chair Lady, I extend my gratitude and my appreciation to the diligent and dedicated team who has made this achievement possible. It is important to acknowledge that it is this outgoing administration that has successfully realized the long-awaited justice package, which has been in the making for more than a decade. The legal position of persons with police tasks, or the Rex Positi, the Ministry of Justice function book, the new salary scales for persons with police tasks. The adjustment in allowances and overtime rates for civil servants performing police duties impacts the rise in budget allocation for relevant departments. This is evident in budget post 41003. Furthermore, the increase is attrib attributed to overtime expenses uh, incurred in 2023. Moreover, the retroactive correction for both the active and inactive staff members of the Ministry of Justice, along with the estimated amount owed, is determined in accordance with the disbursement plan. 
The one-time expenses stemming from the retroactive correction of both active and inactive civil servants prompted by the retroactive alignment to the function book and salary tables since October 10th, 2010 are estimated at 44.5 million guilders, inclusive of employers' contribution to pension and social premiums. The current estimated Sorry, the current estimate includes around 700, 760 employees encompassing both active and inactive staff from October 10th, 2010, projected until the end of 2023. However, the full financial ramifications will only be determined upon the conclusion of this process. The final figures for each individual employee will be recalculated based on a placement confirmed by national decree once it attains an irrevocable state. Following the covenant agreement within the Committee of Civil Servants Union or the CCSU platform, the disbursement of these amounts will be distributed over a maximum period of 10 years. Annual payments will be determined based on the agreed phase approach. The estimated budget allocation anticipates an annual reservations of approximately 5 million guilders starting from this year, 2024, onwards to align with the disbursement plan. This annual reservations is also integrated into the multi-annual budgets. Important to note, Madam Chair Lady, through you, we have already commenced phase one of the phased approach of the placement process for the personnel. As minister, I have already co-signed 44 individual national decrees in the presence of the concerned personnel, and I am dedicated to overseeing this process until the next administration assumes office. Currently, there is a batch of 25 national decrees awaiting the approval and signature from His Excellency the Governor, and another batch of 25 in the process to go on to the Ministry of Finance. The total personnel cost budgeted for 2024 amounts to 67 million, 207,039 uh, um, guilders, included the budgeted retroactive payments and expected overtime cost in 2024. Furthermore, the total material cost budgeted for 2024 amounts to 39,880,424 guilders. The proposed total budget for the Ministry of Justice for 2024 is 107,000,000 87,463 guilders, which represents the 33.78% increase, or 27,037,433 guilders, more than what was covered in 2023, which was 80,050,030 guilders. Madam Chair Lady, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Of course, we are here for any questions and all questions that the members of parliament may have. And once again, I'd like to thank the entire team who's responsible for bringing us to this stage and phase with the entire uh, justice package. Thank you. Thank you, Minister of Justice. Ms. Anna Richardson for your presentation of your draft budget 2024 for the Ministry of Justice. I now go over and I offer the floor to the Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport. I see that the presentation for the minister is already up on screen and that means that we don't need a one minute transition to the next ministry, but we are awaiting the minister himself to make his presentation. So we have the presentation, but not the minister right now.
The Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport is available right now for his presentation, but needs a few minutes to get everything in place. And then the, present, the minister would start with his presentation. Member, members of parliament and all others, this meeting is still in session, so there's no adjournment as the ministers prepare to make their presentations. And as soon as I get a signal from the minister, then we will, the minister will then proceed. Minister of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport, Dr. Randis Rudolph Samuel, I invite you to take the floor with your presentation as your ministry's draft 2024 budget. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning to you and good morning to the members of parliament. Good morning to the Secretary General my support staff and those of the other ministers and those who are listening by which other means, including those who hear in the public. This morning, I have the honor of presenting the draft budget for the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sports for the year 2024. I will discuss with you the mission and vision statement of the ministry of ECYS, then we will look at some of the key achievements of the ministry for 2023, followed by an overview of the top policy priorities for 2024. Subsequently, an overall comparison between the draft budget 2024 versus the budget and actual expenses of 2023 will be discussed. Next, we will get into the revenues and expenses as well as a synopsis of the capital investment expenditure and capital investment income will be presented. Subsequently, an additional matters will be mentioned followed by the conclusion and presentation. The ministry's vision for the period 216-226 is to meet demands and support the people of St. Martin to become self-confident, resilient, lifelong learners who are creative and critical thinkers. Our mission states that our youth will thrive and reach their full potential to become active citizens with a sense of shared responsibility. We will ensure that there are ample opportunities for the people of St. Martin to become lifelong learners. We will safeguard our cultural identity by protecting and promoting our tangible and intangible heritage. Our citizens will actively participate in sports and other physical activities. Madam Chair, you will see on the following slide key achievements for the Ministry of Education in 2023. These include the finalization of the special needs education policy. The department also supported the presenting of the draft law on higher education to the Central Committee of Parliament. The department also conducted research into a framework for the accreditation of higher education programs, um, which was consulted upon with various stakeholders, including the University of St. Martin, and the American University of the Caribbean. In 2023, the draft law on education supervision was presented um, to the Council of Advice and is being reviewed by the Council of Advice. The response to the advice to the Council of Advice on the draft national decree for study financing was drafted in 2023 and vetted by the Department of Legal Affairs. Also for the department, the department also facilitated the continued implementation of the professional development program in collaboration with the division education innovations 
and advise regarding the expansion of the program to include certification in special needs education. In addition, in 2023, the, the Department of Education conducted research regarding the situational analysis to inform the language in education policy. In regards to the Department of Culture, key achievements was the Culture Creative Industry Forum, the celebrations around Flag Day, Emancipation Day, and St. Martin Day, and the, the SAGE Awards. With regards to the Department of Youth, we have key achievements in 2023. The, um, the increased responsibility of young people with regards to their own development, namely by placing priority in the following two focal, area, focal areas, by organizing youth-led activities in collaboration with youth stakeholders, um, and by developing tools in collaboration with stakeholders. The Department of Sports key, key achievements in 2023 also um, are the following. In 2023, we finalized four research slash action plans, child safeguarding guidelines in sports, physical activity in the workplace, a guide and toolkit for employers, utilizing public spaces and physical activity action plan, and fourth, research factors shaping sports participation in youth age from 15 to 24. Also in 2023 for sports, 12 sports were supported through subsidy. We also had 363,163 gillers and 163 and six cents issued for sports development. We also had 215,000 was invested in school and grassroots sports program. In 2023 with sports, we also had 480,000 guilders um, used for facility maintenance. And in 2023, we also had awareness campaigns which highlighted the following. We highlighted athletes, sporting organizations, events, and achievements on government social media platform, hosted a successful health, sports, and culture expo, highlighted legends in softball and awareness, awarded persons in 11 different categories during our annual Brown Pelican Awards. And also we spent 63,491.45 was for the awareness campaigns. The division of exams. Key achievements in 2023. The EGMA and IGRA project started in August of 2022 in collaboration with the World Bank, NRPB, the Department of Education, and the Division of Education, Innovation, and the Division of Examinations. The pilot project was administered in November of 2022, and in March 2023, the EGMA, which is the early grade math, and the EGRA, which is the early grade reading assessment, were carried out in all group three of foundation-based education. The cohort that was assessed are the pupils that started group one during the COVID pandemic. The results of the EGMA and the EGRA will be presented to all stakeholders. The traffic is, an, traffic is an important subject offered in groups six and seven of foundation-based education. Some of the standards are addressed in different parts of the FBE curriculum. The Ministry of Education, Culture, and Sports found it necessary to have a curriculum in place for this very important subject. This curriculum is aimed at ensuring the safety of our children in traffic situation. This marks a historic milestone as it is the first ever document of its kind in the 73 years history of safety in traffic education in our primary schools. The main objective of the division examination of examination is to issue, to ensure 
that all schools on St. Martin are provided with valid tests and examinations. In 2023, all the required examinations were delivered and administered seamlessly in both primary and secondary education, despite now having all the FTEs filled. This was only possible due to the commitment and the dedication of all staff. For the Division of Education Innovation, key, key achievements in 2023, the Division of edu Education Innovations represents all the Ministry of ECYS of Education, Culture, and Sport Trust Fund projects that were executed by the National Recovery Bureau, all correspondence for the Emergency Recovery Project and the Fostering Resilient Learning Projects are all channeled through day from NRPB, the ministry and their stakeholders. They also provides the ministry resilience team and the ministry with the updates and overview of all trust funds projects, not to look. The division of finance, the division study financing, key achievements in 2023. We can see the facilitating of study financing and the NEPA student allowances went up to 108 recipients. The division study financing also coordinated and organized information sessions, workshops, and trainings to prepare study financing recipients to live and study abroad. They also control and monitor the study progress and extensions of study financing for 384 existing recipients, which yield 62 graduates. Continued, they also continue the development and maintenance of the study financing portal with the addition of two new models, namely um, guidance, counselor, and reporting, and 100% loan extension request. The division study financing also coordinated guidance and supervision for studying study financing recipients in the Netherlands. The division public education. 2023 was a year of both challenges and significant achievements for the division public education. Digitalizing, digitalization of education projects. We successfully completed the digital board project training after having distributed one digital board for every classroom and every teacher had received a laptop. This, is, this was empowering, this was to empower all managers and teachers with the tools they need. Furthermore, we, we've greatly expanded the Wi-Fi ensuring that our digital resources are readily available to everyone in the division. When I started, the Wi-Fi was one gigahertz up and 10 down. Now it is 20 up and 100 down. Public school security. The installation of security cameras and environmental sensors in all public schools except MLK because they are not finished with the repairs. These sensors are critical as they provide real-time data on air quality, detect vaping, and also smoking. In regards to school repairs, the public school tender for Dr. Martin Luther King School was not only executed but also completed. The Orania School roof has been restored and every classroom at Orania School is equipped with an air conditioned unit. In regards to improving learning environment, the learning environment is continually being enhanced. We managed to fill several teaching vacancies and introduced a teacher assistant in nearly every class at Prince William Alexander School. This initiative is expanding across the FBE schools, contingent on our budget allowances. When we look at the division of inspection, the key achievements in 2023 um, are as follows. Schools on St. Martin 
report to the Inspectorate of Education, Culture, and Sports on a daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis. Reporting consists of student numbers, teachers' qualifications, student and teacher absenteeism, exam results, exemptions, suspensions, and expulsions. The Inspectorate of Education has completed and submitted the compulsory education report for the academic year 2021-2022 and 2022-2023, a merged document which was resubmitted in 20, November 2023. The St. Martin Division of Ex Inspection, ECYS, also um, attended the CAST conference in 2023. When we look at the Student Support Services Division, key achievements in 2023, one of the achievements was the hosting of the Caribbean Safe School Initiative, CSSI, which consists of a ministerial forum and a youth forum. From January 2022, the head of SSSD division, Mrs. Mussenton Service, chaired the regional organization, organizing committee of the CSSI Ministerial Forum. Caribbean ministers of education and high-level education delegates, school safety focal points, high-level UN officers and representatives from organizations such as UNDRR, UNESCO, UNICEF, Caribbean and Latin America, um, CIDEMA and OES, OECS. When we look at the division, no, the OECS, Caribbean Development Bank, Latin America uh, Development Bank, and our representatives who all attended. The regional roadmap was updated and a new declaration called the St. Martin Declaration was signed and St. Martin became the chair of the CSSI until 2025. The general care management meetings were also an achievement of the SSSD. The GCMM are meant not only to share and exchange knowledge relevant to care within schools, but also meant to assist care teams members in the application of the relevant care-related strategies within our respective schools. There are two levels of GCMM elementary and secondary. Also achievement in 2023, the speech screening program. The program is aimed at, at the identification and prevention of potential speech and language impairment um, in children from cycle one, group one, cycle one, group two. The program began in Ruby La Vega School in 2023. The SEC is to now refer the students who based on the screening indicated that they require speech therapy. For the UNESCO St. Martin, key achievements 2023. The visibility and understanding of UNESCO in St. Martin continued to grow in 2023. Several collaborative projects were executed by St. Martin National Commission for UNESCO with various organizations, schools, and individuals in the community. The generosity of UNESCO in approving four projects via the participation program allowed teachers to receive professional development and permitted schools to acquire instructional materials to enhance student learning and provided opportunities for safeguarding and transmitting of St. Martin cultural heritage. The general care management meetings that was already done 1921. Now we look at the policy priorities of 2024. Our first priority focus on improving a qualitative and sustainable education system through the development of legal and policy frameworks as prioritized in the governing program and the country reform package for the education joint action plan. Secondly, 
to restore access to safe and adequate education, sport, and cultural facilities, and enhancement of the infrastructure through the trust fund, the trust fund financing projects. And thirdly, to enhance the resilience of vulnerable youth, students, and staff in the various sectors through the trust fund finance projects of the Foster Resilience Learning Project and the Child Resilience and Protection Projects. Fourth and lastly, also to protect and promote the natural, tangible, and intangible cultural heritage and a strong shared cultural identity. We look at policy priorities for 2024. In the structural support for the NSI to maintain facilities and execute programs, structural support for the Little League Association, support for the various developments around the repairs of the sport facilities and school gyms namely like the replacement of artificial turf at the Rawalilage, the replacement of the athletic track at Rawalilage, the installation of new lights. I think I went wrong. New lights um, at Jose Lake Ballpark. For the ballpark, we have had improved professional environment for development of all professionals working with children and as, like teachers, caregivers, youth leaders, and coaches, and opportunities. When we look at the overall comparison of the budget of 2024 versus 2023, we see an overall um, comparison between the the 2023 budget and the preliminary expenses versus our draft 2024 budget. This shows that our approved budget for 2023 had a total of 113 million 992 thousand and 37 guilders and the preliminary figures show that a total expense Paid, expenses paid in 2023 amounted to 115682974 Please note that currently the financial statements for 2023 is being compiled, and these figures mention are preliminary figures. The Ministry of ECYS Expenses in the draft budget of 2024 totals 121,869,154 guilders. We look at the revenue categories of the ministry. The revenue budgeted in 2023 was 122,184 and consisted only of examination fees. 98,896 guilders was collected in 2023 for examination fees. Um, we then look at expenses per category. In this overview, the expenses are broken down into three economic categories and compared budget 2023. Amended the budget 2023 versus expenses of 2023 versus the draft budget of 2024. The capital expenditures. The capital expenditures for 2024, we have the coverage of Dr. Martin Luther King Playground 350,000, expansion slash renovation of the John Lamini Center Phase 2, 2 million, upgrading of light L.B. Scott Sport Auditorium slash Stadium Floodlights System Raul Elliott Sports Complex, 2,242,365. Then we have for the completion of the construction of Prince William Alexander School, um, 1,350,000. 
and also for the construction of a high school for Charlotte Brooks and Academy, 12 million 100,000. The network upgrades and expansion, we have 200,000 and the equipment for SMVTS, new equipment that is for the St. Martin Vocational Training School, 500,000 for new equipment. And then for study loans, we have 5,280,000. The capital investment income, we have the capital investment income for the Ministry of ECYS only includes student loans repayments, which for 2024 is budgeted at 371,689. Other matters, the rebuilding, other matters, the rebuilding of inclusive schools which is the Charles Leopold Bell and the Sister Mary Lawrence School, the rebuilding of the St. Martin Library, and the building of the Mad Mid Ministry Middle Management, the Ministry Management Information System, the MMIS. In conclusion, members of parliament, through you, Madam Chair, I would like to stress on the importance of the draft budget of 2024 for the plans of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Rudolph Samuel, for your presentation as part of the draft budget 2024 for the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sport. I immediately, no, before I immediately give the floor to the Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, I will adjourn for three min minutes. Meeting adjourned for three minutes.
Members of Parliament, Ministers of the Council of Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to the continuation of this Central Committee meeting, Central Committee meeting number 15 for today, during which the handling of the 2024 draft budget has started. We are in the part of this meeting where ministers are presenting or making their presentation with respect to their draft budget 2024. We have had several ministers already who have made the presentations and I now continue by offering the floor to the Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, Omar Utley. Minister Utley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good day. Good day to my honorable colleagues, my honorable colleagues in the calm, and the viewing and listening public. I would like to notify the honorable members of parliament through you, Madam Chair, that while you may receive 19, 18 or 19 slides from me, I will be concluding at slide 12. 12 to 18 is added information for your perusal and understanding on the next steps. So without further ado, I'll dive into the budget. The presentation content, we have, I don't think it's changing from there, no. Is it doing from over there? So we have the presentation content, we have the key achievement for 2023, the overall comparison with 2024 budget and 2023 budget, the revenue, the expenses, in the policy priorities for 2023 and the highlights in the expected expenditures. So we have the key achievements that were carried out in 2023. We have the one-time increase in the minimum wage. We have the increase in AOV pension. We have the, dra the draft amendment of the civil code to address the abuse of short-term contracts, which is currently at the said, the draft tourist tax levy, um, which is currently at the said, we hosted the National Job Fair Entrepreneurship Expo. This was actually the largest held. The finalizations of reparations legislations regarding the CPI indexation, dialogue with key stakeholders to complete the SAHA, also known as Atli Care, pilot project on the one stop employment permit and residence permit in collaboration with Justice and establishing the GP after our clinic. Other key achievements in the community development, basketball court lightings, rims, backboard repair. We did community days whereby we bring the community to, the department to the community whereby you can register for financial aid, social aid, legal aid. We realized that a lot of the people within the community didn't know the assistance offered by government. We did the healthy breakfast programs with the schools. We also secured financing for the mental health project. We had the extension of the home repair program, not one but two. We also did the elderly smart tech training and senior health fair and also the women's self-defense classes. <coughs> So here we have an overall comparison of the budget. As you can see, VSA is a ministry that spends over receiving. So we see in 2023, we budgeted 98 million for um, the budget. In the actuals, we use 91 plus million. For 2024, we're budgeting 100 plus million. And whereby you can see the income budgeted was 1.4 million the actual income was two million. And here for 2024, we have around the same amount, a slight decrease of 1.4 million and 62,000 projected for the income. With the revenues, as you can see, we have budgeted, actual, and budgeted for 2024, as we cannot do actuals at the moment. So for fees, you have 75,000 budgeted in 2023. The actual you, um, fees were 55,895, 
and for 2024, again, we have 75 budget. The miscellaneous and other incomes were budgeted at 17,000, and as you can see, the actuals were zero, so we budgeted at zero for 2024. Work permits, 1.3 million, 49,524, and the actuals was actually 1.9 million, 577. So budgeted, we have 1.3 million, 47,650. Ambulance fees, we had budgeted in 2023 for 40,000, but actuals were 49,987. For 2024, we have it budgeted at 40,000 again. And at the totals, you can see 1.4 million, 81,524 was budgeted for 2023, the actual was 2,016,459. And as you can see in 2024, we have budgeted 1.4 million, 62,650. Here we have the expenses per category, um, personal expenses, um, personnel expenses we had budgeted. And as you can see, we increased the budget in 2024. So we went from 12 million, Six hundred and seventy-eight thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight to sixteen million. So we increased that personal budget. The subsidies went from one point one million to budgeted at one point five million in twenty twenty-four. As you can see, the social security and health insurance in two thousand twenty-three we budgeted thirty-five million. Um, and whereby in 2024, we budgeted 36,265,000, so an increase there. Goods and services, 4.9 million. Um, we increased the budget in 2024 to 9.1 million because the actuals in 2023 were 9.3 million. Total VSR, total cost for VSR, we see in 2023 budgeted 49,928,291, whereby the actuals was 60,961,918. So in 2024, we budgeted 63,068,114. For sickness insurance for civil servants, you see we have budgeted at 37.5 million. The actuals were equivalent, 37.5 million. So we budgeted the same for 2024. Whereby the total expenses in 2024 is 100 million, 568,114. Here you can see the chart presented where we speak on personal costs, subsidies, social security, goods and services, and sickness insurance for civil servants. Next slide. The largest part of the budget representing 73% is allocated towards sickness insurance and social security. That's 73% of the budget of VSI. We have highlights in the expected expense. We have 1.3 million for further development and implementation of integral social registry system. We have 216,000 for the non-communicable disease plan. This is very important in our healthcare of the country. We have 300,000 to implement new formation plan and legal positions in ambulance. We have 200,000 in the help the heal prick project very important for newborns and the development later on. We have 250,000 for the EPI vaccines, and we have 740,000 put aside for the continuation of the home repair program for the vulnerable and elderly. Some highlights expected expenses, part two, 100,000 for the ESF community-based training. This is very important for our community during disaster management. 1.7 million for transitional shelter program. This shelter program has been implemented since Irma has um, successfully transferred over 100 persons back 
into the community, um, into the working community successfully. So we look to continue this program with the Dr. J Foundation. We have 120,000 for the community development programs. We have 100,000 for training and awareness campaign programs, very important as well. Um, education and informing the public is key. We have 59.5 million for civil servants and persons receiving medical aid and OZR. We have 5.5 million contribution towards ZV insurance for, personal, for persons still insured but unemployed. We have 8.5 million for financial aid put aside. Here we reach to the final slide, slide 12, policy priorities for 2024. Thank you. We have development of mental health legislation, EMS awareness campaign week. We have the public awareness campaign for non-communicable disease, the non-communicable disease plan, the youth vaccination and dental program, development of sustainable sustainability plan for CVRM program and development and implementation for palliative care. Madam Chair, I will leave it here as I stated from 12 on is additional information for the members of parliament to peruse and we welcome any questions from the members of parliament. Thank you. Thank you. Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, Minister Otley. Minister, with your indulgence, if I can ask you to briefly go back to the slide before the last. That would be 11. And is the amount one, two, three, four at the fifth bullet? That is 59,500,000 guilders for civil servants and persons receiving medical aid. That's the correct amount there, 59,500,000. I, I, yeah. see, I see you're a staff member in the back nodding in agreement. Yeah. I just wanted to get that yes. confirmed, and apparently it is the case. Okay, thank you, Minister. Sure. Just wanted that um, clarify before I continue. Thank you once again, Minister Otley, for your presentation. And I now continue and give the floor to the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication, Minister Lambrix. Minister Lambrix, you have the floor for your presentation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> so my presentation, here we go. Okay, so we have my presentation here on the 2024 budget. Uh, the first point, first page is discussion points, ministry, philosophy and strategy, the current realities and stats, the key achievements and budget of 2023, the draft budget 2024, immediate priorities of 2024, an update on the CAPEX of 2023, the challenges of the realization, and the conclusion. What is this? The Ministry's philosophy is to assist with decision-making on the short-term and long-term for the country of St. Martin. We must outline the relevant statistics, list the critical dilemmas, and explore and encourage diversification areas with a holistic and comprehensive approach. We aim to stimulate sustainable economic growth, provide economic relief, and further tourism development, while creating employment and economic, op economic opportunities for the people of St. Martin through the consistent dialogue from public and private partnership and stakeholders. The ministry's strategic objectives are to increase the economic growth, to provide economic relief, enhance tourism development, maintain an enforcement through controls and regulations, and promote info campaigns and service improvement. Um, this is outlining the ministry's strategic approach. So it's to restore, promote, and protect tourism. Um, tourism does remain our main economic driver. It must not be neglected nor and protected. The uh, tourism industry will be enhanced by sustainable demand 
through our marketing and partnership with diversification within the tourism and central element. <clears throat> Critical is an aspect of protection, um, our greatest export, our environmental and our people. Create an attractive business environment and build economic diversification. The economic diversification will work towards greater economic um, diversity in St. Martin. Comparative advantages exist, helped along by improved efficiencies and targeted policies identified in identified sectors. These are our current realities. Our current reality, uh, realities are um, the increase, uh, the real GDP is forecasted to grow by 4.3% in 2024. The inflation rate in 2023 was 3.16% and is forecasted at 2.43% in 2024. The unemployment rate in 2023 was at 5.62% and is forecasted in 2024 to be at 5.4%. Total stayovers um, and arrivals in 2023 was 395,000 guests, 5% increase from 2022. The total stayover thus far in quarter one of 2024 is 93,000 plus guests. It's already an increase of 15% from 2023 arrivals. We have an estimated 400,000 plus persons forecasted in 2024 for stayover. The cruise passenger arrival in 2023 was 1.3 million guests and 491 calls. It was a 35% increase from 2022. The total cruise packs arrivals in quarter one of 2024 is already at 386,000 guests and 161 calls, already an increase of 10% from 2023's quarter one arrivals. We have an estimated 1.4 million passengers expected for 2024 in cruise arrivals. Um, this is just a little overview on the economic licenses. Um, an increase in the business licenses um, has been noticed um, which is a good sign. It suggests that we have economic growth and increased um, activity in the business sector. There's a little graph that everyone can peruse a little bit and give some more information. Then we go to the next slide, the famous one. Um, these are for the bus permits that we did issue um, when we had the campaign going on. There were 97 new bus permits issued. 47 of them, approximately half, were for former assistant drivers and the other half were new. Um, the new taxi permits, we had 142. Also approximately 50% were old drivers that were already on the road and the other 50% were new. Um, the inspectorate of TIAT stats, um, economic controls, we had 862 with um, only 15 fines in 2023. Transportation, we had 150 controls with 18 fines. Uh, driving exams, we had a total of 865 in 2023. Um, so far, the economic controls versus 2023, we had 80 already in quarter one. Um, already six fines issued with infractions found. Um, complaints, we had nine. Transportation controls, we had 36, and we had eight fines given out. Um, the oper operation expenditure budget balances for 2023. Um, all the departments came in under the budget um, that we had forecasted. Um, on, this, on the um, graph that we have here, we see a little bit what it is. So the ministry itself, we have 170,400 budgeted. We use 163,270, which is approximately 95% of the budget that was um, budgeted for. Um, the minister's cabinet, we had 255,483. We used 243,000. 710, which is also 95%. Um, if we look on the list, we have some departments which show a little bit more, um, which are some due to staffing and, and different availability, different um, stuff that was budgeted, but not being able to realize yet. Um, this graph also in this is for your perusal, so you can take your time and look through it, and any questions in the future, I'll be happy to answer them. These are some key achievements of 2023. Um, we have the MSME development, the Small Entrepreneur Development Program, um, the street fairs, we have the agriculture that was promoted in schools. We had a new program that we were busy working on and was um, approved, which is the Train the Trainer for Hydroponics, so also for agriculture, different methods of growing. 
um, subsidize the farmer's market. Then we have some investment climate, updated and centralized requirements to start a business, reviewed and updated list of moratoria, which includes adjusted policies on transportation and gas stations. Key achievements of 2023, um, we have the quarterly reports on the consumer price index, the inflation calculations, the tourism expenditure and satisfaction, tourism arrival data um, for the national accounts, the annual calculation and publication, the census 2022 data gathering and preliminary figures, key economic indicators were the economic licenses, building permits, utility consumption and cargo developments. Um, when it comes to legislation for 2023, we have the LBHAM for the bus tariffs, which is pending the SARE advice. We have the LBHAM and automatic driving exams, which is approved and published. We have the LBHAM and the lottery boot fees, which is approved and pending implementation date. And the LBHAM online gaming, which is in another report. Um, <coughs> for the tourism, key achievements, we had some co-op campaigns with Sunwing, Copa, and Spirit Airlines, which um, proved to be very fruitful. Um, we had some trade shows also, which travel agent webinars, Vanguard, the IMX, IMM, the CHTA marketplace. We had the hosting of various journalists, influencers, and travel agents through the fam trips. Then we had the um, SXM Festival, which was just concluded. We have the carnival coming up, the Walichi Best Weekend. We have um, some new website development, which added more um, stakeholder businesses as content. Then we had the OTA campaign created for July 2023 through March 2024 to increase bookings and arrivals through the Expedia campaign, <clears throat> which has also proved to be very um, fruitful. And then we have the rebranding of St. Martin, the new launch and logo through December 20 of, that was la launched in December 1st, 2023. Um, on the spreadsheet and on the um, presentation I'm doing, you'll see the logo shown throughout the presentation. Um, then we had the PR representatives in all major markets, US, Canada, Europe. The stay over arrival results from 2016 through 2024, so pre-IRMA, IRMA, um, COVID and post-COVID pandemic times. We can see um, 2023 already, we are you know, climbing a lot higher than we were in 2022, um, with the stay over tourism growing from 248,000 in 2020, sorry, in 20, sorry, 2022 we had 372,000 and we had 395 for 2023. Um, in 2024 we expect um, an additional 400,000 Then these are the stayover arrival results by region. So the US and North America still proves to be our highest um, influx of passengers and stayover visitors. Europe coming in second, the Caribbean third, South America fourth. Cruise tourism arrivals from 2016 to 2024. Um, back in 2016, we had 1.6 million. Um, last year, 2023, we grew that back to 1.3 million. Um, in 2022, it was 844,000, so significant growth back in cruise tourism and cruise arrivals. This is some extra data that tells us um, you know, the age groups and, and some other information that people, why they travel, so that you can peruse for yourself. Key challenges with the budget implementation of 2023. Um, the capital budget was only granted in September 2023, so a little bit late for us to, to execute some of the stuff. However, we had worked on it, and you will see it further on in the, um, in the presentation. A lack of legal expertise was also something that we had to face, um, along with critical vacancies not um, being filled. Um, frequent changes of ministers and the priority shifts was also an issue for us. Um, the continuation. The revenue overview for 2023. Sorry, I think I passed one. No? I'm missing a slide, I think. Okay. 
2024 budget. So here we'll see the budget um, for the minister is set at 298,663 with a material cost of 170,400, total operational cost 469,063. Um, it shows you for the minister's cabinet also, it shows every single one, I won't go through every one, but it's clear on the spreadsheet um, to see. The total, however, budgeted for the personal cost is set at 17,382,392. Uh, material cost at 9,268,273 for a total of 26,650,665. The budget 2024. Um, these are the following six or seven department accounts for 91% of the ministry's budget. We have the EVT, we have the STB, the STAT, the LNS, MET, and IDES. So this is a comparison from 2023 to 2024 of the departments. So it can be seen um, if there's any increases or decreases. Um, when it comes to the ETT, we remain the same. Um, the budget of STB, we have an increase in the marketing and promotion for the American tourism market. Um, as was seen on the previous slides, um, the North American market is still our biggest uh, market and we still aim to keep growing it. Um, we had some small increases in the Canadian tourism market also, also for the European tourism, um, Latin America, Caribbean remained the same, um, product development remained the same, the online travel agents remain the same. Um, the co-op airline campaigns has been reduced. Um, the festivals has been increased slightly from 360,000 to 496,000. And the online marketing research remains the same. So we went up in, mar in budget from 4.3, 4 million, 355 and, and 794 to 5 million, 70,000. 561. For stat, we have the same. Um, it shows that we have everything aligned except for the specific statistics research part, which has been increased to have a better research done when it comes to the statistics, which is much needed. Um, for the LNS, also, we have a little info here which can be perused. The Met Office um, all remains the same. IDES all remains the same as well. Um, this is an overall graph, to, uh, overall page here to show the um, differences in the budget from 2024 and 2023. So it shows it in the amounts and also the percentages where it was reduced, where it stayed the same, and where it increased. Immediate priorities for 2024. Um, the re realization and economic diversification, stimulating key sectors in the orange and green and blue economies, so agriculture, culinary arts, fashion, music, yachting, and maritime, facilitating trade and investment through the Investment Promotion Agency and regional agreements that attract and foster investments in key sectors all year round. Uh, stakeholder consultation and engagement through roundtable discussions to address and develop an agreed upon plan of approach for the sectors and the way forward. These are some key policy areas of 2024 which can also be perused. It also has the beach and vending policy shown in it. Key policy areas of 2024 um, for public transportation. Um, we also have national energy and climate policy which energy security assessing the need to diversify energy generation with alternative means. So uh, for example, um, LNG, we see new ships. I, a lot of you were here on the Icon of the Seas when they had the inaugural call. One of the newest ships to the market also being run in LNG. Um, excellent ways to also create income for the country with refueling because there's not many ports that offer it. Um, environmental concerns, realizing the effect of climate change to our region the regulatory body establishing of the legal structure to enforce, monitor, and report. 
international commitments, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and transition to low carbon economy. The capital expense and project overview. Um, we have the marketplace in Vendors Village, um, which was first discussed as, by myself as minister um, when I just got into office back in 2023, our last budget. Um, I'm happy to announce that we're almost there. Um, we are just expecting two more signatures to be finalized, and then we should be able to finish that project and start it off of the ground. Um, we also have the um, new MDS building. We also have the six replacement vehicles for the economic controllers, furniture and equipment for the new building, intellectual property in tourism branding, and the tourism product development and improvements. Um, some other projects that we wanted to try to get under the capital expenditure um, which we have not gotten to yet because we were still finalizing and, and ensuring to get the market completed, um, is this one, which is the Harold Jack project. Um, in the presentation sent to you, it's a video, so you can click on each one and you can get a little fly-through, walk-through. Oh, here we go, it's actually playing. Then we also had the Mullet Bay Beach. Um, everyone here, I think, can remember Mullet Bay Beach with bathrooms, proper facilities, proper restrooms and showers. Um, the beach has gotten significantly popular over the years, again, how it used to be, and I think more than what it used to be, and I think restrooms are more than um, needed on that beach at the moment, especially for the locals and tourists alike. So that will also be a great addition. Then we have some new proposed income generating measures the fees for the lottery sales agents, license fees for online gaming, aviation and safety fees. Um, critical budgeted vacancies, that is still one of our, our main um, issues that we have to work on. Um, here you can see exactly which department and what is necessary to fill those vacancies. We have the economic growth and development activities and initiatives of 2024. So the agricultural development, um, continue the support with agriculture and schools via the subsidies, closer cooperation with the French side, explore subsidies um, and assistance for agricultural and business, farmer's market in Phillipsburg, add an agricultural department to the TIAT structure. So an actual department within TIAT that really focuses just on the agricultural part not um, just some staff doing the work and then we don't get um, the fruits of the labor afterwards, how we should. The MSME development, finalized subsidies to the Martin Entrepreneurship, um, support go local, monthly events, evaluate and continue the support of the Backstreet Bonanza and the Cope Affront events, which we have mostly during the Christmas season and for summer in Phillipsburg. Diversification. Um, engage roundtable discussions with key stakeholders. <coughs> Excuse me. Finalize economic impact. Study for the maritime department. Develop a POA to execute and require the required. The required. Okay. To execute the to execute and realize the true diversification. Focus on the niche markets or tourism, especially based on trends. <coughs> We have the investment climate, hire a project manager to execute measures, establish the IPA, facility discussions and processes with interested investors, identify investment <coughs> worth attending, and make the necessary preparations, update investments, investment website and bring under our control. Then we have the job creating, Attracting new industries, example, IT sector, financial sector, blue sector, light manufacturing, expanding the tourism industry to sports industry, uh, to sports tourism and ecotourism. This is just um, giving a little highlight. <coughs> so 
sorry, how we expand our reach with the marketing and digital strategy. So that can be perused. This is uh, diversifying the tourism through the orange and blue economies in 2024. We have um, the following will assist with addressing seasonability. So to keep the season um, going throughout the year rather than having downtime by ensuring we have activities throughout the private and public partnerships all year round. The Twice the Caribbean campaign ensures that the following is advertised. Develop a cultural experience via art, fashion, and food by promoting these experiences accessible to visitors via tours. Promote the culinary experiences such as the SXM Lagoon Fest and the Chef Cook-Off, which I think is coming up this weekend, so that should be something everyone should look forward to and attend. The Appetizer Week and this SXM Flavors. Initiatives to sports tourism that attracts heads and beds throughout the year via group and individual sports tournaments hosted locally. So basketball, paddleball, baseball, softball tournaments. Then the Blue Economy, partnership for sailing and yacht events. Promotion of ocean partnership activities. The product development. Um, improve Phillipsburg beautification with signs and murals and treat project. Um, improve the road and border signs and infrastructure through the CAPEX. Attend various conferences such as airlines, um, the routes, the CLIA cruise, travel agent conference, the Sea Trade, the PAMAC, the FCCA, um, the tourism awareness, schools and local community, airline development to continue the increase in airlift, cruise line development also to continue the increase in cruise tourism. Data collection in 2024 to monitor the trends, tourism exit survey, development and of <coughs> sorry, embarkation and disembarkation cards, comparative analysis, strategic of major competitors in the region. <coughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I've been with the flu and gotten better, but not 100%. And the talking here with all these slides is not helping. Um, we have the FAA. <coughs> we have the FAA Category 1 progress for the audit areas of 2023. Um, this shows how complete we are, where we are, and what is still left to do. Um, the Netherlands has also agreed to assist us um, greatly with areas that we need when it comes to getting back to the Category 1. So we're finally on track with that part also. Um, then we have the completed activities of the audit. I think I passed that, no? Oh, no, 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 those are, those are not slides to show, sorry. Okay, here we have bottlenecks activities. So the lack of capacity, financial resources, cooperation with other ministries, tools such as buildings, etc. Here we have some challenges that we faced, um, financial challenges and bureaucracy to be effective and competitive, shifting of priorities with constant change of ministers, human resource challenges, the leaving and hiring, um, legal basis and our capacity alongside technical support, limited budget room for new policies, thanks, and key policy matters. Uh, the conclusion. A need for stakeholder consultation through roundtable discussion. Need to discuss critical policy matters and crossroads and challenges. Budget 2025 preparations are already taking place to synchronize with 2024. Career fair in the Netherlands. Opportunity to replace critical staff. Incoming government will decide on their way forward and priorities. Establishment of independent authorities 2024 and 2025. The budget and expertise is needed. Thank you. Minister Lambrix, thank you for your presentation on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication. And uh, I now look at the Minister of Finance, who I believe is ready to present or make a presentation on behalf of the Minister of Vromi. Minister Irian, you are ready with your presentation? 
uh, a presentation rather? Oh, the minister is going to verbally um, give some information, provide some information for the Ministry of Vromi, whose minister, as I indicated at the beginning of this meeting, is unavoidably absent, and that is Minister Doran. And on his behalf, Minister of Finance, Minister Iran, will give some information, some introductory remarks and information on the Ministry of Vromi. Minister Iran, I hereby give you the floor to make that, to give that presentation on behalf of the Ministry of Vromi. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. So we've had some technical difficulties when it came to the presentation, so we'll just do it verbally for the most part. So when it comes to the Ministry of Vromi, um, and we look at the budget, it is a relatively the similar to Budget 2023. So we'll just go over some highlights. Um, over the last few years, when we look at income from the canon fees, the canon fees have averaged about five million per year, with a focus in 2023 on, on in looking and retrieving the long lease fees. We've managed to set up a task force specifically for that, and we have now increased the canon fees by almost three million guilders, adding to governor, go, government's revenues. So going from five million, uh, five and a half million a year to 8.8 .8 million um, last year. When we look at the CAPEX, we started in 2023 with the main uh, side roads project. You will see that there are many side roads that have been paved already in concrete, Dutch Quarter, Nazareth, um, St. Peter's, Kobe is next up. We are continuing the side roads project, hard surfacing dirt roads into concrete roads in 2024. That's on the capital expense, expenditures. And that's budgeted at 8.6 million guilders. And then we have doubled the amount of um, capex for main roads. So that's all asphalt roads. And we are Also looking at, for CAPEX, the waste water treatment plant in KB. That's been discussed for many, many years. And that's at six, 17 million guilders. And as I mentioned before in my presentation, finance, the purchase of land in, from the plants family at about 18 million guilders. This would deal with, one, the cemetery issues um, housing, among others, and centers. In 2024, we're also looking at the expansion of the sewage network, which is co-financed by the Netherlands. Um, we are putting up 45 million gillers for this. And then we have for purchase of vehicles for inspection department, a purchase of a, of a vessel for the Ministry of Rummy, for the inspection department for the Lagoon. This request was already there in 2023, but um, the proper documentation wasn't there, and now in 2024, we do have it there, so there's a, the Ministry of Brahmi would now have access to a boat, which the Ministry of Tia can also use for dual inspections um, for the lagoon, among others, which I think is a, a necessary step forward for the ministry. We're continuing with the Dutch Quarter Road Development Program, which is also the CAPEX, and the finalization of the Prince Bernard Bridge. Generally speaking, the Ministry of Rummy has been focusing on improving services, um, especially in the permits department, trying to speed up the, the services in the, in the permits department by also focusing on hiring the necessary persons, um, filling the necessary vacancies in these ministries. We are now busy finalizing the uh, position of the Secretary General for Rummy, also the head of permits, uh, quality manager, among a few others. And that, that was a heavy focus for us um, in the last few months on finalizing the top positions within the Ministry of Rummy. As I mentioned before, the, the, the budget itself remains relatively the same to 2023. So I just look forward to any questions from members of Parliament. And those are the highlights for the Ministry of Rummy. Thank you, Minister. 
Irian for presenting on behalf of the Minister of the, or the Ministry of Vromi. Minister Irian is, of course, the substitute minister for the Ministry of Vromi, so we thank him for presenting those few highlights of the Ministry of Vromi. Thank you, Minister Irian, and we allow a minute or two for the next presentation, which will be done by the Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, Ms. Silveria Jacobs, and as the minister gets her presentation ready, this meeting is not adjourned at this time, members, so we just await the completion of that action to get the presentation up and running, and the <coughs> Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs will then make the presentation on behalf of her ministry. Minister Silvera Jacobs of General Affairs, you have the floor and I invite you to make the ministry's presentation at this time. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Esteemed members of the Council of Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament, Secretaries General, dedicated support staff, and of course the esteemed citizens joining us through the various media platforms, good morning. I extend a warm greeting to one and all. Building on the previous presentations of my colleague ministers, I would like to present the highlights of the budget allocations for the Ministry of General Affairs. Early this, earlier this month, I presented the this esteemed body of parliament with a status update on the trust fund projects, our reform measures, and both the internal and foreign affairs portfolio. During this presentation, or these presentations, sorry, this one, I will touch on other crucial items for the Ministry of General Affairs. Additionally, before I go into the specifics, Madam Chair, I would like to remind this parliament of the development and launch of the first national development plan in vision, sorry, in 2021. Central to this endeavor was fostering a national vision through inclusive participation. This involved extensive engagement with the community through social dialogue sessions and alignment with the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. St. Martin, like other small island developing states, faces challenges such as susceptibility to economic shocks, environmental fragility, and the impacts of climate change. The resulting vision, the NDV, growing stronger together, comprises three overarching themes a united and compassionate St. Martin, a strong and resilient economy, and a safe, secured, decisive, and independent nation, each with 25 corresponding national goals. These goals underscore a collective commitment to transforming St. Martin into a resilient, economically self-sustaining nation that enhances the quality of life and the well-being for future generations. The envisioned future, Madam Chair, members of parliament, people of St. Martin, entails a resilient community of educated and productive individuals Madam Chair, I lost my presentation. Okay, got it back. <laughs> if I may recap that sentence. The envisioned future entails a resilient community of educated and productive individuals in a socially and economically sustainable environment characterized by safety, justice, integrity, and a robust economy. This shared vision, crafted by the people of St. Martin through their engagement, serves as a guiding framework and forms the basis for policy considerations for this budget of general affairs.
Okay. From this page, we will see that the objective, uh, the content of this presentation will be focused on the objective and core task of the Ministry of General Affairs, key achievements, and continuation for the policy priorities for 2024, overall budget comparison, 23-24, revenue, expenses, capital investments, and concluding remarks. The objectives of the Ministry of General Affairs. Considered as a driver of government, the Ministry of General Affairs is responsible for national development, for internal as well as operational development, and external representation of St. Martin. The ministry's objective and core tasks contribute to this responsibility. In such doing, the ministry operates in an environment influenced by internal and external factors, including factors on kingdom, regional, and national level. The objective of the Ministry of General Affairs is therefore to represent the internal affairs of our country in the field of internal and kingdom relations, foreign affairs, legal affairs and legislation, personnel, policies, IT, communication, public and internal services, program and project management, and the funds that we need to raise to be able to execute these. The core task of the ministry of general affairs are outlined in the organizational decree of the ministry, AB 2010, number 10, and the core tasks are to coordinate, advise, and support on the process towards a general government policy, the preparation, publication, and management of the laws and regulations of St. Martin, including responsibility for legal advising, national security, disaster management, as well as the development of, and the integration and implementation of our foreign relations policies. Also to create an effective, efficient, trustworthy, and client-friendly service to the government organization, to our business sector, to our citizens in general, as well as to organizations that make up the community of St. Martin, as well as to communicate externally pertaining to government's policy in general. Some key achievements in 2023 that we would like to see roll over into 2024 and beyond are under human resource management, which is crucial for the capacity building that has been mentioned over and under throughout all the things that we have been trying to execute over these past years as a serious challenge, and the strengthening of our organization to be able to carry out our developmental needs as well as our wishes and goals. This is important precondition for our national development. For this important initiative, the program called It's All About the People was designed with therein the following program lines. One, strengthening the HR cycle. HR cycle training is currently being provided on management level. Information is also being digitalized to create more efficiency. And function books and job descriptions are being reviewed and improved upon. Also a strategic personnel policy the department has already prepared a revised onboarding program for incoming personnel and is currently addressing several policies. While we are on this point, Madam Chair, I would like to update the members of parliament that government of St. Martin will be participating this year in the National Career Fair in the Netherlands, which takes place this Friday and Saturday. Government's participation aligns with the strategic approach of the Department of Pay Personnel and Organization with enhancing opportunities in the workforce and developing and engaging in awareness building and employment enhancement within the organization. Whilst in the Netherlands, the possibility of allowing for additional one-on-one -on -one orientation talks with interested persons outside of the allotted days of the National Career Fair, fostering the opportunity to gather more information on the expectation and needs of the prospective Candidates will be pursued. In addition, the personnel advisors will be partaking in a scheduled visit to the St. Martin House in the, in the Hague for a meet and greet session between March 26th and 28th. Also, the job descriptions, et cetera, have already been shared so that prospective candidates can start to prepare and make appointments. So I encourage all those 
within the Netherlands to look forward to this opportunity. On the training and development, specifically in the area of legal proficiencies, the PNO department is currently working on a project plan to enable structural internal certified training and as such development of the organization. Discussions are also ongoing together with our partners in the kingdom here in the Caribbean, Aruba and Curacao on this topic. A project manager has been hired to implement a plan of approach, a plan of action, sorry, to strengthen legislative capacity. Additionally, Madam Chair, you will see an overall increase in the budget for overall training and upgrading to ensure that staff can continue to get the necessary upgrades necessary to continue to develop in the areas where we are currently lacking. The restructuring of key departments, the function books for both the ICT and fire department are in the advisory phase. Both are, uh, have been to the Council of Advice, in fact, returned just this week for further, uh, for the NADA report to be done and changes to be made. The IT developments in general, as well as their use within the government organization has been tremendous over the past 25 years. Additionally, the government has expressed its ambition to introduce the concept of e-government on St. Martin. With the allocation of the funds from the Reconstruction Fund and from the reform measures, many projects with significant IT components are being pursued with the involvement of numerous stakeholders. From these projects and within existing organization, there is a recognized need to restructure the current ICT department into a modern IT department that is prepared for the developing IT landscape as envisioned. The fire department faces several issues that can be addressed with the proposed changes to the organizational design. Insufficient disaster response section following hurricanes Irma in, and Maria in 2017, it became evident that the disaster response infrastructure needed improvement and expansion. Immediately after Hurricane Irma, other departments provided policy support to facilitate infrastructure revision. However, it is time for the necessary expansion of this section to be formally addressed. Additionally, the changes will allow for the transition of senior staffers into more management roles and leadership roles and the placement of the cadets who have been waiting for some time now into their functional positions, which have been pending. Embarking on a more efficient and cost-effective organization. It is the Ministry of General Affairs objective to have the Department of Facility Services operate in a much more optimal and efficient manner, both organizationally as well as operationally. The assessment of the functioning was finalized by the SWA Bay in 2023 in close consultation with various internal and external stakeholders. A roadmap to restructure the department was developed after the assessment to make the department more able to address the dynamic needs of the entire organization, which has grown tremendously and to be able to improve efficiency. This is a key priority in 2024 and the installation of the new facility services head as well as support staff is pending in order to implement said roadmap. As previously stated, the facility affairs department plays a vital role for the entire government organization. When functioning properly, it can garner significant cost reductions as well as generate much needed income. Culture and integrity. Improving the culture and integrity of the working atmosphere internally and addressing the deteriorating external image of government of St. Martin as a reputable employer has been an ongoing concern of mine. To that end, various analyses and information gathering have taken place, such as the exit survey and the employment satisfaction survey, which I've elucidated upon previously, which were executed in 2023. The outcomes have been translated to recommendations that are to be implemented by the organization and monitored by the civil servants themselves under the B measures in 2024. In addition, utilization of the existing HR tools 
was employed to guide efforts to improve output of persons in key positions. Where necessary, persons who had difficulties with this approach were offered the opportunity to transition out of the organization, allowing for the recruitment of new staff who will be taken along in this new and improved culture of integrity and accountability. Also in stark contrast to 2022, where we had to administer a reduction of benefits. And in 2023, when we removed those reductions and brought civil servants back to their pre-COVID standards, we achieved an increase in benefits for our civil servants for 2024 and beyond. Following a breakthrough in the ongoing talks between the union negotiation team and government's negotiation team, a crucial agreement was reached between the Ministry of General Affairs and the Committee of Civil Servants Union, CCSU, marking considerable progress in achieving a, achieving a mutual understanding as it pertains to employment benefits. As such, after some 10 years, a principal agreement has been made regarding the indexation of civil servant salaries, with us applying a 2% indexation in 2024 and 25, with 22.5 projected for 2026. I believe our Minister of Finance already explained this. So I will move on to the vacation allowance of 1% in 24 and another percent in 25, achieving 8%. And also jubilees were addressed uh, and going back now to 15 years of service with subsequent celebrations every five years. And specifically between 25 and 45 years, a full month salary along with a day off is being granted culminating in a jubilee of 45 years with two months full salary as well as a day off. Two key adjustments to the legislation were agreed upon as well. Amendments to Article 3 and 8 will finally address the main complaints of civil servants, namely the application of introductory sales have been reduced to one year with a maximum duration of two years instead of four years. So initially they could be in two run-up scales, now it's only one. The rationale behind these introductory scales were clarified, emphasizing that this provision affords candidates the opportunity to prove their capabilities if initially they have not been found to be quite there yet over a two-year period. Article eight will allow internal candidates to negotiate their salary on the applicable scale after having been selected through a regular recruitment procedure. So there will be no longer limitations in what salaries such a civil servant would be able to uh, negotiate. Additional changes proposed further clarify that the intended application and offers that civil servants currently have will offer them more mobility. This has been one of the things that also came up within our survey. Digital government. Helping to improve the synchronization of government public services to the community of St. Martin, the ICT department works in collaboration with various departments on initiatives to provide better public services to the community. As a method of allowing services to always be available, the department is adopting a cloud-first procedure which will allow systems to always be available to the public regardless of disasters and other unforeseen circumstances. This also allows departments to be able to quickly be operational as well as become less reliant on having to operate out of physical offices. Improving internal external communication as well as improving information sharing and public access to information, the ICT department will be revamping the government website, uh, has already started to do so, and the online services site, as well as to reintroduce the intranet to make information more easily and readily available, as well as enhance communication both internally and externally. The ICT department is engaged in digitizing business processes for various departments to reduce manual processes. Unnecessary data entry, also reduce error-prone data, and strengthen transparency and efficiency within the department. This is continuing along with Microsoft Enterprise Agreement, Fortinet Security Fabric, CRM, and website maintenance. 
we hope to be able to improve the synchronization of public services, both internally as well as externally, to achieve the department goals by acting first, uh, sorry, acting as the first and central point of contact with the customers of all departments, including public information call centers, and providing quick, accurate, specific, and qualitative information to internal and external customers, and providing front office services for organizational units. Policy priorities in 2024, Aside from the achievements just mentioned in 2023, uh, which are continue to be policy priorities in 24, I'd like to mention the following initiatives that were not yet mentioned. Under the portfolio of Interior and Kingdom Relations, we have the early warning systems. This is a project that was lo um, launched in 2024 after successful procurement was conducted, resulting in a selection of technical assistance to support the project's specific outputs. Discussions and consultations have also taken place with technical assistance resulting in a draft agreement. And I must say this has also been done for the Office of Disaster Management. The advices for both have been submitted for approval by the Council of Ministers, and this process included both drafting and approving the terms of reference, the publication, the consultation and information sessions, the evaluation, and the contracting. The introductory meeting with the stakeholders is scheduled for the end of March, and significant to this early warning system project is the framework for early warnings, which does not currently exist. It involves developing standardized messaging for warnings, and another significant component is the feasibility study to determine the most suitable early warning system technology for St. Martin, taking into consideration our geographical and spatial landscape. Under the Office of Disaster Management, a key aspect, this was launched also in 24, a key aspect of this project is the updated function book for fire department, which I just mentioned, and which is quite critical for the operationalization of the Office of Disaster Management as it provides the acquisition of necessary staff for such an office. The third project that is currently ongoing is the one for plastic free, which I noted, Madam Chair's introductory remarks that uh, we are celebrating here in Parliament and continuing to hold our environment in high regard in the way that we act and as leaders of government and parliament leading by example. So I totally applaud that, Madam Chair and members of Parliament. After the launch of this project in 2023, procurement was conducted, resulting in technical assistance being hired, um, legal technical assistance, as well as statistical technical assistance. Uh, the SMDF is up, uh, managing this project, and just last evening, the first town hall engagement session was held at the USM. Prior to this, several beach cleanup activities have been conducted, as well as a plastic-free student art contest as the need to ensure to involve our youth in the awareness program has been identified and it's leading in this matter. Under the foreign affairs portfolio, there's been a marked increase in the level of international engagement since the hurricanes of 2017 and further accentuated by the COVID-19 pandemic. As our country develops, Madam Chair, so must the quality and quantity of its international engagement. The proposed budget reflects this reality, including a strong component for professional development to effectively meet the country's needs in line with international best practices. The department set and met the objectives uh, of the ambitious policy agenda in 2023, and in 24 will continue to build on these achievements. A key priority is the relationship with our neighbors in the north, uh, French St. Martin, Ratification of the border treaty is expected in the second half of this year. The treaty also provides a legal basis for the establishment of cross-border cooperation platform, which offers a framework of collaboration between both sides in several thematic areas. This engagement is supported by monthly political meetings between both sides and continuous discourse at the technical level. We're also actively, the department is supporting World Bank and UNOPS project services following the signing of the host country agreements in 22 and 23 respectively. 2024 will be earmarked 
uh, sorry, will be marked by increased involvement in the strategic engagement of the country with these organizations, as well as the implementation of the provisions of the treaty uh, for the workers. We've seen a great progress in our structural reform measures since the start. We have stressed the importance of the NDV as a directive for all St. Martin's development, including the reform measures, and therefore it holds the measures for structural reforms, enhancement and restructuring of government in the areas of financial control, cost effectiveness of the public sector, taxes, um, the financial sector, economic reforms, health education, and of course, strengthening the rule of law. As I mentioned before, many of the B measures uh, fall within the Ministry of General Affairs, and we are diligently working to improve our civil service and the manner in which we use the public funds. These measures can, however, not be seen in isolation from our other developmental priorities. Synchronizing all of government's programs and projects is paramount, and for this reason, based on the ministry's mandate, coordination, and support to the other ministries through incorporation of these reform measures and developmental activities into one national plan under the current vision. So that is something that the United Nations Development Program is assisting us with, and we hope to have finalized within 2024. The overall comparison budget 2024 versus 23. The general affairs budget is 82 million for 2024, 82,296,601 guilders, which is 14% of the total government budget, a decrease compared to 23, where it was 16% of the total government's budget. Compared to 2023 budget, the 24 budget increased for general affairs by one point, approximately 1.5%. The increase is mainly due to the increase in personnel expenses, which was actually increased by 4% compared to 2023. Other budget accounts resulted in major increase for budget 24, which are namely the Travit, travel budget, the building insurance budget, the representation budget, and of course, training, which we want to emphasize. Travel budget had to be increased due to the fact that with the necessary execution of priority policy areas in foreign affairs, that there was never enough funds to facilitate that, so that needed to be increased, as well as the Department of Interior and Kingdom when representing St. Martin outside for future developments. And we are busy appraising all government-owned buildings. It is projected that the value of our government-owned properties will increase uh, significantly. Therefore, it is imperative that the budget for building insurance be increased to facilitate the new policy. The representation costs also needed to increase to allow for the hosting of dignitaries when visiting St. Martin, such as uh, was planned for the Kingdom Conference, which should have taken place in March, but has been postponed, but still is expected to take place in 2024, as well as other dignitaries that require hosting. Over the years, personnel department did not have sufficient budget to provide training to the organization. That was usually the first thing cut, Madam Chair, and we ensured that that was not the case in 2024. So our priority to ensure that our civil servants are adequately trained uh, PNO is cur currently organizing training for the organization in areas such as communication, <coughs> middle management, project management, HR cycle, team building, policy writing, advice writing, legislation writing, as well as data analysis. With these courses, the Department of Personnel will strive to fill the gap in the skills needed within the organization. Revenue. The, top, the 2024 revenue increased by 36.74% compared to 23. However, the Civil Registry Department only generated 2.5 million in revenue, which was only 70% of what had been projected. Therefore, the budget was also decreased by 31% to 2.3 million. Additionally, the ministry anticipated a decrease in remittances revenue to the governor for the passports, 
Um, in 23, we only generated 383,850. Thousand in remittance revenue for passports, which was about 47% of budgeted amounts, but that can also be contributed or attributed to the fact that passports are now valid for 10 years, so there's less need to be renewing them. So the department does not generate as much income as it used to in this regard. The parking lot revenue generated a total of 274,105 in 23, which is only 61% of the budgeted amount. The 24 budget was still increased because uh, we're expecting to finalize the installation of the boom and making the parking lot uh, semi-automated to have better control of operations. It is the department's plan to have this done fully automated. So we're doing semi-automated in 24, but fully automated in 25. Other revenues budgeted from funds related to ongoing reform projects, which are about 1.8 million in 23, should be increased to 2 million in 24. The Department of Buck has also applied to Resembid for several projects, such as for the single-use plastic, early warning system, and Office of Disaster Management, when we lost some funding in 23, which we were able to secure. And we expect that these projects will total about 2 million guilders as well. Per economic category, we can see that uh, the personnel budget, as I mentioned, was increased by approximately 4%. This is mainly due to the increments in salaries and filling of vacancies within the ministry. Goods and services budget was, has remained the same compared to 23. Most of the expenses associated with goods and services are posted to the Department of Facility Services and contributes to about 35% of the total budget of the 54 of goods and services budget of government. The department facilitates the entire organization in building rentals, electricity, water, communication, cleaning, office supplies, building and vehicle insurance, as well as vehicle maintenance. The Ministry of General Affairs succeeded in balancing its budget by utilizing its own budget to facilitate its policy priorities as mentioned and subsidies were also decreased by 1%. CAPEX, capital expenditures in 2024, the department budgeted 1,750,000 1, for over three years to ensure the entire government is fully digitalized. The vehicles that are currently serving government, the majority are more than five years old and in need of repair or replace, the, to be replaced. And this will then, once we replace them, this will decrease the need for the costly repairs. The marriage hall is also now located at the new government building and is pending additional improvements in the amount of 50,000 guilders. It is operational, but we still require some more um, improvements in order to make the day a special one for those persons using the hall for this purpose. <laughs> and as mentioned, lastly, the Department of Facility services is uh, making necessary improvements to the parking lot so that we can the necessary expenditures needed so that it can be fully automated madam chair i've come to the end of the presentation and i would like to thank the members of parliament for their attention to such um, the majority of the elucidations are also within the budget to explain per uh, policy expenditure where the priorities of government lies. And I trust that though we are in a transition period, Madam Chair, that the importance of continuity is stressed here so that the necessary improvements, especially the focus being on our civil servants within general affairs, can be realized so that the working environment can be such that we can encourage those who are applying in the fair this week to do come home and be part of the development that is needed for St. Martin. I thank you for the opportunity and I look forward to the questions. Madam Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, uh, we thank you for your presentation of the budget for your ministry for 2024 as presented in the draft budget by the government of St. Martin. Members of Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, 
We have come to the end of the presentations by ministers of the Council of Ministers. We have had all of the presentations and these for are the largest part have been shared with Parliament already. We were scheduled to break for lunch at 1 p.m. It is now 1.24 p.m. So we will break now for lunch and we will return at 2.30 rather than 2 o'clock as we are only now breaking off for lunch, which is approximately 1.25. So we will return at 2.30. This meeting is adjourned until 2.30 p.m., at which time we will begin with the members of parliament posing their questions to the different ministers. So members of parliament, ministers of the Council of Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is adjourned until 2.30 p.m. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>